Traffic on the right. It's turning, so. The turn signals I was going to get for the scooter is not going to come. It turned out the stores I ordered from two of the stores. doubling down. They're now adding the variants. Um, the VOCs, the variants of concern. The problem is that the so-called variants of concern are improperly termed. The, 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 the of concern part comes from the dual use research of concern. That's where that comes from. And the thing is, the whole term COCVD, called the top level nomenclature. <laughs> covers all these so called VOCs. They're all covered within the term CVD. So the people putting this stuff out, these so called top level scientists haven't got a clue as to what they're actually talking about because they're using incorrect terminology and this is the same thing with Lon LeBron he goes out to correct people he talks about the ter term Varion well I'm sorry but the Varion is not a right is not the proper term and the where this matters is these people at the top should know if you're a top person you should know these particular terms particularly if you're banding them about if you're talking about terms, and all you're doing is bringing up terms and, you know, sort of sounding like a dictionary, then you need to know what you're talking about. Why is it not very on? Because the, the odd part comes from particle physics, like protons, electrons, neutrons, photons. That's where it's coming from. The problem is the Varion is not a subatomic particle. The 
it is a structure if you want to call it the structure of, on, on the most basic level it's a structure that comes out of uh, protein chemistry his proper domain in terms of the nomenclature is organic chemistry this is where you have H1N1 the, the N is neuraminidase it, 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 these are the proteins the proteins within organic chemistry in terms of the nomenclature of no organic chemistry have already been named so these terms that are being bandied about by these so-called experts I know you gotta trust me I know and you gotta listen to me and I tell you this and I tell you that I'm oh, sorry but this is why you, why you sit down and you, you, you do your research properly and the thing is the research is not going to be very quick it is easier to come up with bullshit than to come up with something that's significant I'm going sufficiently fast I don't need to be going you know to let the bus out I'll catch up with the lights. There we go. so-called experts know that they're triggering opioid, op an increase in opioid, opioid use. And we're seeing a large number of these overdoses on opioids. Op opioids is basically your drugs. And the whole thing, if you're wondering, uh, look up the term opium, you'll find up opioids. And the center of the opio op opioid trade is Afghanistan. So if you're wondering why the United States is still in Afghanistan, well, it has nothing to do with lithium. It has more to do with uh, uh, heroin, opioids, uh, than anything else. Back to Edward Bernays and the whole thing with uh, uh, manufacturing consent. As you sit on both sides of the thing, both sides of the aisle, and you create the illusion that you need an, uh, an enemy. You have an enemy that you have a, a need to do certain things because you know we're protecting your uh, uh, security, we're protecting your safety. Well, no, you're not because you're sitting on both sides of the aisle. And, you, what, you, what they're basically doing is creating the need for government. Um. 
Unfortunately, this is the nature of reality, and then we sort of got to live within this reality. Uh, and so well, you have the assessment of uh, of what the reality is, and then from there you make the decision as to how you're going to live within the reality. Other people choose to sort of comply and sort of walk around like zombies. Others choose to sort of be quiet about the things that are going on behind the scenes in terms of... their involvement and so on and so forth. Uh, others choose to be more vocal about their opposition. Each has its own consequence. So. in the evening, and 22 hours into the 7th day of June. And we've got the vlog going again, so uh, well, this is our conversation on the way home. The mind never stops. Yeah, it's certainly a lot cooler out. The, the temperature has certainly dropped off. We'll see how things ended up working out with the with the uh, screen door. I still have to do some more work, but eh, that's the way typically things go. You get things done harshly. And the thing is, is that people don't realize that this sort of this reality exists that uh, outside of what we see on TV and the news, that <laughs> everything is a fake, everything is a lie. There is always this element of of the sort of called Ted Baxter news. And for those of you who don't realize what the reference is, it refers to. Uh, Mary Tyler Moore, the TV show. This was in the in the 70s, I think, in the 80s, maybe into the 80s as well. Uh, centered around this uh, female reporter who was not really a reporter, but uh, she did a lot of the writing, the script work for uh, the TV anchor Ted Baxter. He, you know, so Ted Baxter was a TV anchor, and he took all the credit for the work that. Uh, the staff of this sort of called local TV channel. This was talking before about uh, uh, the whole issue of UHF. These were these side channels, and so you could do a lot of stories about these uh, side channels and keep the cast rather small because these channels themselves were rather small. Another lesson on throttle control. How 
how to engage the throttle and keep yourself in the proper motion when crossing so the distances between yourself and other cars are sufficient. In other words, you make it across sufficiently without sort of blocking traffic or getting yourself killed. <laughs> We live in a, we live in a world now, and this is sort of all well, things I've been thinking about. And I talk about, talk about in terms of phrases, what goes on with the government in terms of what we see from this Ted back the news. And then a lot of people, a lot of pundits don't explain the history. They'll 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 bring out references, but they'll never explain what the reference is. And there are people who just don't know because they well, they weren't around and. The fake world has always been around us. All, uh, we've been bathed in bullshit for a very, very long time. It's been a lot of ancient history. So there's a lot of it out there. And, the, and most people just do their job and put their day in and that's it. They don't think of the consequences of what they're doing. They don't have a long-term thing. They're there is to simply follow a command and that's it. These are your soldiers, these are all your pigs, your security dogs, and so on and so forth. And they are dogs. They don't think about what they're doing. There's no thought. But again, that's the way they're supposed that's the way they're trained. The whole training of the so-called paramilitary style training. is to eliminate individual thought. And that's what happens. And this is why you also have these atrocities because once so the, the, the criminality begins with the squad, like, 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 like a massacre, everyone just sort of follows along and never questions what's going on. They, because their, their conscience has been turned off. And this is what we're sort of seeing today is that the conscience of the people, of the general public, has been turned off to the point where no one cares if people are being murdered systematically. We're not talking about, talking about systematic racism. We're talking about systemic murder. That's what eugenics is. It is a program that eliminates people, people on a systemic basis. And it's easy to program in people and into computers because now people, the computers will do the killing. And because the people follow what the computers say in terms of their tests and so on and so forth, a person can be chosen to die, who can be selected to die by a computer. And the doctors and nurses who obey that computer will wind up killing their patient. And so, oh well, they died. On to the next one. A large chunk of your CVD deaths, and this is where the beta test comes in, is to see how many people they could kill. And these are the people who believe in eugenics. And, they, and, and the program of eugenics is not advertised as a bad thing. And this is what they call euthanasia. Euthanasia said it's a happy death. But no, they say it's a good death. That these things are, the death is beneficial. That you're helping the earth. You're helping the environment. You're helping these people who are, well, sick. Right? The only way to cure the sick person is to kill the person. To let them die. But of course, you know, if the person's injured, that this is what you had in the uh, on the movies we're watching tonight. The dog got injured very badly. There's no way to really help him out. You had to sort of sit there and you know take care of the dog. So what do you do? You shoot the dog. You kill the dog. Not a happy thing, but this is one of these necessities in life. And of course, we do our necessities. Things to keep us alive, to keep us going. And this becomes part of the attitude of society. That the human 
gone and he disappears. And what's left is a rather crude and rough husk. But yet, there's a society that considers itself to be social and humane is anything but. It is not humane. It is inhumane. There's someone crossing. You can't even see the person. They're there. And unfortunately, this is the nature of part of that reality. That this is what we're going through. And what happens when people like Lionel LeBron see the reality? They become extremely depressed. This is what happens to a lot of the humanists. When the humanists, in terms of their uh, these philosophers, the intellectuals, when they saw and began to realize what was going on, they became extremely depressed. And at the at the well, the end, their end point was to go with their own hand. In other words. They chose to commit suicide. The ultimate act, the ultimate control was suicide. And that's what they did. They committed suicide. And they saw they saw no other option, no other reality other than this was the end point. That the death would be the end point, there would be no more suffering after that. But and this is where the problem comes in. The Humanists were atheists, but they were, were in they were a minority. The atheists are in the minority. The theists are the majority. And the ones who are up, up at the top, the elite, the true elite, are theists. They won't commit suicide. But they understand. The only time they commit suicide is when they realize that everything's come to an end and everything's sort of falling apart. And well, then, then they themselves don't necessarily realize that, well, you take the emotional pain with you.